your identity crisis. What you mm-hmm. do or who you are. Right, I want people to think about that for a second. What you do or who you are. And then I want everybody to pause for a minute and think of how they introduce themselves or what's the first question you usually ask somebody that introduces themselves to you. Right? And I bet for most people it's going to go like this. Like I would introduce myself, hey, uh, Ali, I'm Jared. Nice to meet you. And, you know, you'd say, hey, I'm Ali, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, okay, cool. What is it? What do you do? Right? Like one of the yeah. first questions I'm going to throw at you is what do you do? Like I'm already trying to establish value to you based on how you make some money. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you think about it, like we almost always do that. Like it's one of the first conversation starters. And what happens if they tell you they do something that maybe they're not proud of or that you just put no value to? Do we stay engaged in that conversation or do we look to move on to somebody that has a more esteemed title for influence or the perceived influence? Mm-hmm. Right? Think about that. Like what would we do? You're at a you're at a networking event, right? And you meet somebody, and he's like, "Oh, well, I, I uh, you know, I, I do tech stuff or some small, co- whatever he says." That that you're like, oh, "Okay, well, I'm I'm really here to meet the big shots." Mm. Would you stay engaged in that conversation, or do you move on and introduce yourself to somebody <laughs> else who is like, "Well, I'm the vice president of you know worldwide, blah 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 blah," and then then you go further in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think we've all been guilty of that at some point, and then I think we all <clears throat> well, I can't say all, but I know me for sure. When I asked that question, or now I really try not to ask that question, but when I used to ask that question, it's almost like we're assigning value very early in a conversation about will we pursue this conversation more? Is it somebody worth spending time with? based on simply how they make a living. Mm. Right now, I'll tell you personally, this is how it went for me, and it used to drive me crazy. No matter whose barbecue we went to, social function we went to, if you, if I was there as your guest, but I didn't know everybody there, generally you would introduce me like this. Hey, guys, this is my friend Jared. Uh, he's a police officer. And I'd be like, what the fuck does that have to do with the barbecue? <laughs> Right. So now right off the bat, half the people you just introduced me to don't want nothing to do with me because they think I'm looking <laughs> at them to see if they're breaking the law. Yeah. The other quarter wants to ask me every police related question they've ever had. And then maybe a quarter is generally interested in me as a person. All simply off how I feed my family. Right. And like on the flip side for you, if I took you to a place that was prominently conservative, maybe law enforcement based, and I introduced you, it is my friend Ali, and he's in the marijuana vaporizing business. Immediately, you're going to lose half of them for nothing you've ever done except for try to make some money. So, Ali, I want to ask you this. Why as Americans do we identify so much of who we are with what we actually do? I think it's because we have made workism like your religion. It's it's what you are it's what we associate with your purpose with with your identity with who you are and i mean it may come from it may come from the industrial age right we needed so many workers we needed people to identify like okay like you are you're a mechanic you're this you're that and that was that's what you took on and in america I don't know about any more, but for a long time, we have been the most productive country in the world, right? I think like to be an American where we, where 
people come from all over the globe to live the American dream, to work, to be successful, to make a living that we have glorified work. We have glorified workism, and that is part of your identity and who you are and part of part of the life blueprint, right? You go to school, you get a degree, you get a job. And that job is kind of like the main meat of, of the American life blueprint. So I think that we have, we have just spent so much time identifying ourselves, our purpose with what we do for a living, that it has just become this, this belief that, you know, your, 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 your purpose and your value is deeply tied to how you make your money. Yes. I think it's interesting. You said purpose, right? Because I, I would argue that most people don't feel what they do for a living is remotely close to their purpose, which leads to unhappiness. Right. How many people do you know that are like, tell you, you know, talk about what they do for a living, but it's not what they want to be doing? Most people. So it's not their purpose. They're just it's a means to an end. But somehow we get caught up identifying ourselves with that. And I, and I don't know, you know, we got listeners around the world. So Nikki and some of the other ones that just come to mind right away, um, Comment in and let us know if this is the same in other countries around the world. Because I know Americans traditionally have longer work weeks, less vacation, and longer hours than a lot of other countries. Um, maybe, maybe it's not something super unique to us, but it just really is interesting to me because it's so easy to get caught up in what you do for a living and allow that to kind of become your identity. So where does this pressure come from, right? Where does that, where does it come from? Like, how do we grow up thinking like, man, I got to get this good job so I can tell people that's what I do for a living, right? And why I don't want that job because I wouldn't want to tell people I do that for a living. Even though you can have any of these jobs and be a great person and provide for your family. So where does that come from? I think part of it, quite honestly, comes from parents. Right, because very few things will have kids do are designed to develop who they want to become. It's all designed on what they're going to be qualified to do. Right, go to school, get good grades. Why is that important? So you can get into college. Well, what's college important for? So you can get a a good job. Right, but none of that is who they want to be. We, we've talked about education before and kind of the standardized testing and the standardization of so much of that generally lacks a ton of creativity where that is where people find themselves. And, and I just recently went through this having, you know, three kids that took all different paths. They all finished high school. My oldest just graduated college. My Middle, you know, my son in the middle, he's out exploring the world as himself. And my youngest is still trying to figure out what she wants to do. But no matter where we went, the first question adults would ask me is, okay, what are you going to do? And I'd always be like, why, how do they know what they're going to do? If you really want to know them, why don't you ask, who, who do you want to be? 